Yale Brothers, episode 79. What's up, man? Hey, man. How are you? Fine, thanks. I'm Chris. I'm Roger. We're the, We're the Yale brothers. Yeah, that's what we are, man. That's what we are. <laughs> what an, w- Welcome to episode 79. Oh, man, I'm excited. I'm excited. Tell. We got a good friend of ours on today. Absolutely. What you just heard was a song called Working on a Dream by said friend and singer, our guest, singer-songwriter Christy Jakes. Um, What's up, Christy? Not much. I am just raring to go today. Oh, Sounds so are we. We're so excited to have you on here. <laughs> hey, Christy, we've known each other for many years. I'd like to give a little, read off a little blurb, a couple blurbs okay. before we get started, but it's awesome. Like, I've known Christy for many years, and I know you've met Christy a couple times, too, here on the Grand Strand. Um, the right to say, I knew you when you were very involved in the wellness industry here in Myrtle. Yes. Okay. And But during the pandemic, you you, uh, you returned to school for a nutrition degree and picked up the guitar again after 25 years and began writing and recording. So Christy's got two albums under her belt and her um, output has been staggering over the past couple of years. Um, can I just put a little blurb from your website, Christy? Christy Jakes sure. Music. Christy Jakes lives in the Myrtle Beach area of South Carolina, but grew up in Charleston. In Charleston, she was embedded in the local music scene there, taking guitar lessons, singing on occasion, running a local music store, wow, and working for an entertainment newspaper. Homie! Lived and breathed music back then. Christy lived and breathed music back then. This was in the early 90s, and things changed a few years later. She did not touch a guitar for over 25 years, but is making up for it now, playing, writing, singing, and recording 
And uh, there's a quote from you, Christy. You say, I have rediscovered my passion for music and how much it can heal the soul. I was inspired by another artist to get back to my real self. I hope that I can translate my love and passion for music onto others. Well, that's enough from me, Christy. Thank you so much for being on today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. Oh, my gosh. too. Well, that, the song up top was called Working on a Dream. Let's just jump right in. Tell us a little bit about that, Working on a Dream. Well, when I'm writing songs, I'm always writing from life experiences, something very personal to me, and working on a dream. You know, it was always my dream to get into music and be a musician before I'd kind of drop the ball. Yeah. Uh-huh. But there's a line in the song, working on a dream while I'm living in a nightmare. Mm-hmm. Yes, that wasn't lost on us. No. Nope. God. Yeah. And the nightmare that I'm living is I have a lung issue. Yeah. So I'm working on getting on the list for a double lung transplant. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So, Jeez. But, of course, it hasn't stopped me from doing what I love. Well, that's cool. No. Love to- that. Totally not. And I, I you yes. and I have spoke about the, so. the lung issue issues you have i'd like to touch on that in a little more detail a bit later if that's okay because oh my god sure Uh, um so um now instrument wise do you play all the instruments or do you have a band or what's the deal no actually that's my awesome producer his name is tavis stanley he's in las vegas okay he's in the band art of dying um saint asonia he he's been at adelita's way he's been in a, a few bands wow um but he's awesome so do you do you just do this via the internet or do you go out there and absolutely re- no the internet he and i have never met in person it's really weird well isn't it amazing <laughs> well, to be able to that isn't and it sounds fantastic it does sound fantastic thank you how did you how did you hook up with this producer we have a mutual friend, um, Todd Kearns. So Todd put me in. Todd and his wife put me in touch with Tavis. Oh my and god! I am so grateful for that. Oh, what a great collaboration! I, I commend you. It sounds wonderful, and your voice is incredible too. By the way, thank thank you very much, Christy. Before we do a deep dive on your music and your process, uh, tell us about growing up in Charleston. Give us a little bit about that. And. Th- things like you were, I- I'd like to know more about embedded in the music scene and the local music store in the paper, but can you kind of roll something, just roll it all together for us and let us know how growing up in Charleston was? Yeah, well, m- my family was kind of musical. My father had this amazing baritone voice, beautiful, but he only sang in church in the congregation. Mm-hmm. My brother was a great musician guitar player singer songwriter he passed away in 94 oh and i got a couple of his guitars i see um so they they were hanging on my wall for years oh yeah but yeah i started i started singing in high school i was in the chorus i got a vocal coach I sang at Spoleto Festival in Charleston. Yeah, nice, yeah. Nice. Then I started working for Fox Music and taking guitar lessons there. And then eventually they opened a satellite office in Mount Pleasant. Yeah. And I, man- I managed that for a while. Did you enjoy it? Yes, until I got robbed at gunpoint. Oh, <laughs> my God. Oh, my God. Uh, that would kind of put a damper uh, oh on Oh, my God. I didn't see that coming. Holy Damn. shit. <laughs> Oh my God! Oh, you hurt? Were you hurt? <laughs> no. Thank God. Oh. Yeah, I, it was terrifying. Just, I don't even know that he really had a gun. Yeah. But just the thought of you it. Don't want to. Yeah, you don't want to take a Here, take these Les Pauls. Just get out, please. Take the till. <laughs> he, get, get lost. he just wanted what was in the cash register. Yeah. Oh, what oh a what God. a dummy. <laughs> oh I know, God. really. Yeah. Oh my God, Christy. And I also worked for Charleston's Free Time. Okay. What's that? that? It was an entertainment newspaper. Oh, cool. That's and right. I did reviews of local musicians, like the albums, 
Um, I did distribution, that kind of thing. Holy cow, oh, that's, that's cool. That's why I call you a homie, because we both have connections <laughs> to that. That's I did not know that this after all these years, Christy. That's awesome. Um, well, uh, was it a circuitous route? How did you end up in, how did you wind up, I, I don't want to say end up, but how did you wind up coming to Myrtle Beach? The wrong reasons. <laughs> oh boy you want to leave it at that or you want to elaborate that's up to you yeah that's up to you it, 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 a musician mm-hmm. that's basic yeah <laughs> by the way he and i are friends again so it's all good oh that's cool. okay yeah yeah <laughs> that's cool and, so, and how- when when do you put that when, when do you what put a time stamp on that that was late 90s mid to late 90s oh wow Wow, wow. So you're a Myrtle Beach native. Basically, I am now, yeah. Yep. Oh, my God. Yep. Um, I remember distinctly, like when we met, you had, at some point, you had something called, I think it was called the, the Wellness Co- wellness Center, Wellness Council. Council, Council, and yes. And then, then it did become the Diabetic Wellness Council, or am I getting mm-hmm. this wrong? Yes, um, it did. All right, so when I met you, you were in the wellness industry per se am i getting that right yes okay uh and i also seem to remember a children's book am i am i eartha gets well uh that's still around you still it's still out there not really the publisher we had kind of stopped publishing it (laughs) but i'm i'm looking for a new publisher for it actually because i think it needs to be out there it actually won an award nice. when it came out. So, and give me, give us just a little bit about it. Like, so Eartha gets well. Eartha's a little girl who never wanted to go outside, never wanted to exercise, didn't like her vegetables, and then she kind of had an epiphany oh. and changed her whole outlook, and she started eating healthy, and then she learned about recycling and the environment and. It's basically a, an entertaining, colorful book with a message. Cool. She sounds like she was on an upward spiral. Yeah, no, on an <laughs> yeah. Up awesome. And uh, excellent positivity. And through it all, you've been flexing your creative muscles per se. Yes. Um, during the pandemic, also, in, in what uh, you've given us uh, by way of press release and website, um, you went back to school to pursue a nutrition degree. Yes. Okay. And this was concurrent. This is crazy. 25 years is a long time. What happened to cause you to pick up the guitar again? I went down the YouTube rabbit hole. <laughs> oh, yeah. I had, I mean, it was 2020. I didn't have a whole lot to do. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had closed my, my council office. And so I'm sitting here watching YouTube, which I never watched a lot of YouTube yeah, me neither. Prior, yep. But there's an artist that I've really liked for a while, but I got more into what he was doing at that point. Oh, yeah. And I'm watching him do acoustic songs on YouTube, and I'm like, I used to be able to do stuff like that. Not as well, but uh, I could still do it. Right, fair enough. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. That's like a little a little kick, kick in the pants to get, get back to what you love. And so yeah. you you dusted off one of the guitars and started going. Is that what basically the crux? Yeah, I, yeah, I tried, but then I I found a fantastic guitar teacher because I had forgotten everything. Yeah, except for the basic chords. Right. So I had to relearn. Well, I am so glad you did. Yeah, this is uh, this <laughs> Me is too. this is inspiring as hell. It really is. Um. Hey, you're doing yeah. the work. You're doing the work, and that's what's paying off. Yeah, but may yeah. I say that that does like uh, f- like a certain amount of fluency on a guitar is separate from being creative and writing songs because you've written a lot of songs yeah, over I agree the past with couple that. of years. Uh, I know there's yeah. a distinction there. Uh, this may be a little trite, but I mean, then I want to dive down. Can you run down when you started doing music projects? How did that work? Albums, singles, some sort of timeline. Like when did it, oh, you you first said, "I'm hey, I'm going to write a song." Well, I actually started writing when I was back at College of Charleston. Oh, nice! And I I took one songwriting class. Yeah, 
And then I, as I was taking guitar lessons back then, I started writing some lyrics, which is basically what I do. I get you. Know, you. Just writing lyrics. Yeah, I'm with you on and that. And somehow I kept all those old lyrics over time. All these years, I still have a stack of them. Cool. You know what? That's a gold mine. Beautiful. Yeah. And so I, I reached out to my friend Elise Testone. Yes. And so she and I started going through some of those old songs and trying to edit and revise. And then we started writing new ones together. Very cool. Now, and that was... Go ahead. I'm sorry. That was in 2029, 2021, um, yeah. early. Well, that's yeah. super cool. So she's awesome. Okay. Sounds like a good good team. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So then putting these things down... What was it like? Was it challenging or did it just kind of happen? Like getting getting demos together or what have you. What did you use? What did you do for the initial things? Well, like she and I did our FaceTime writing because she was living in Rhode Island. And I went to a studio locally, Mission Control Studios in Polly's Island, uh-huh. and recorded a couple demos. Yeah. And then... My friend Todd hooked me up with Tavis, and he helped kind of turn those songs into more of the sound that I was looking for. Yeah, beautiful, cool. Yeah. So yeah, you're so you're you're, you're off and running for sure. Yeah, absolutely. You're, you're off yeah. And running. I noticed that you have distinctly different styles from song to song. That's why we, we'd like to use three, yeah. the two more of your songs. But um, uh, very recently. You recorded a single called Better Late Than Never in Nashville. Yes. And we'd like to post a link to the music video. Okay, how did that come about? Was this part of the whole I don't the the whole way it happened that you traveled up there and decided to record up there? That was different for you. What you do? Well, they reached out to me via Instagram and I did a little research, you know, just check them out, making sure they didn't just want my money. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it was a fantastic experience. I was connected to a couple of great Nashville songwriters. So I sent them my lyrics and they reworked them and, you know, created the, the music. I love it. Melody. We did three original songs and then a cover. Well, that's excellent. Um, but it was, it was great to be up there in the vocal booth. I had Nashville session players. Oh man, oh, come on! Who were absolutely incredible. Oh, that's the real deal right there. How fun did that? Well, have lightning to be? fast on the on on picking up what you wanted to. Oh put my down. gosh, it was unreal. They recorded four songs in two hours. <laughs> Unbelievable! <laughs> that's oh my god! I love it. Yeah. Oh my god, that's awesome. Um, the better Very late cool. than never seems like it's kind of very appropriate for what you've done yeah i mean it's, again i i write from life experiences mostly yep i can feel it i can feel it <laughs> uh your new single just i like to say it dropped your new single just dropped breaking down the walls it dropped on uh, august 18th the last friday and before yes. before we play that one give us a little bit about that it was just time to get past all the obstacles and keep moving forward that's basically what it's about i'm breaking down the walls all the barriers so i can just live my life well beautiful no that that's inspiring to me i'm sure it is to chris absolutely all right well let's hear it
what a cool song. Christy, great job. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you for allowing us to include three of your tunes on this. Um, oh, absolutely. I'm going to, I want to geek out. I'm sure Chris wants oh, no, to geek here we out go. too. What's, <laughs> um, are you comfortable with your home setup? What's it like? You've got, uh, give us a, a rundown. Chris uses um, Logic Pro here, but we use a little thing called the Zoom L8. It's a little self-contained unit, and then he does like all kind of posts. I dump it into Logic and edit from there, but that's basically it. I have a little room, yeah, <laughs> with all my with all my crap in it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> little sound sound hole type thing. <laughs> yeah, I've just got my MacBook Pro. Yep, uh, I've got my Scarlet audio interface. Yep, I use Pro Tools, which. I used to have a very love hate relationship with. Uh, yeah. And now? <laughs> but I'm finally used to it. Man, t- t- learning curve, you know, just. Ah, Lee, lo- I'm learning a lot in Logic Pro and I'm j- barely scratching the surface. I, I, I'm, I haven't even scratched the surface on um, Cubase. Uh, yeah. I, I see him doing stuff and I'm like, man, one day. Uh, but that's great. So, I mean, that's, that's kind of geeky. You've got, I see several <laughs> guitars behind you. What a great Yeah, setup. and there's more on the wall. I, I kind of have a problem Uh-oh. with that's, guitars. Yeah, I believe me. We know what, you know I, what it's I called. I have gear, gear acquisition syndrome gas. Yeah, gear yeah. acquisition. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just, I just spent a little money on a, a guitar and I just bought another amp. I got a bunch of stuff in here. <laughs> yeah, there's another guitar that I have my eye on and yeah. it's going to be a gift to myself once I get past all this other stuff. Very good. What is it? It is a PRS Tele. Oh, I saw. I love them. It is the Miles Kennedy signature oh, model. Yeah. I've, I've, I've looked at it. It's amazing. I, I just bought uh, the, I love it. I just bought the PRS uh uh se2 hollow body piezo oh nice oh, yeah it's so good I, i'm i'm down that prs rabbit hole though but man that's a nice guitar yeah. you're looking at but you do what he, yeah do you do what he does and like get the guitar and decide it's not really right for you it's like <laughs> it's like buying a dress i mean buying a dress yeah. and going to the prom and then going and sending oh i got to uh, well believe it or not i'm going to connecticut next month to a guitar workshop with Paul Reed Smith and Miles Kennedy. Oh my God! Damn, Chris. And and I'm gonna go try out the guitar. Oh my gosh, that's but you can't get it. it can't be a better place. Yeah, that's, that's super cool. So, uh, yeah. Oh my God! That's so cool. I want to make sure that I can use it and that it's light enough. Yeah, it and, yeah, speaks to you, sings to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it because I went when I was in Nashville. I went to gibson garage oh yeah yep and i saw an epiphone it was the nancy wilson fanatic the nighthawk yeah it was beautiful i put my hands on it i played it and i was in love yeah and i bought it a year later as a gift to myself after i finished recording the first album all right that's awesome Man. But I had to touch it first because I didn't even know it existed. No, I I can't say I'm all that familiar with that one. But yeah, it's all about getting it in your hands, no doubt. Yeah, I was very, very, very pleased with this uh, this hollow body. I yeah. love it. But you returned some. You returned some. I bought a Squire. I mean, a, a no, not Squire. Sire. It's a Larry Carlton <laughs> Telly style. Mm-hmm. It's because this one had been back ordered forever. But then the next day it came off back order and then the other one was already on its way. It's like, guys, can I switch it, please? No problem. <laughs> I use Sweetwater. They're pretty good. Oh, they're great. Yeah, they're awesome. And they always send you candy. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I actually, I've never had a better experience. I, I, ha- I haven't had a bit of honey in a long time. <laughs> Sometimes it goes with, oh Not my. a little bit of honey. Oh, my God. So we're, <laughs> you've got a total of two albums out but you yes. have more singles am i ima- am i Im- imagining this or you have singles that are apart from any albums yeah i have singles i'm i think that's going to be the route i'm going to take for a little while yeah why not yeah, yeah. so uh, yeah i had the the four singles that i recorded in nashville God. which i'm trying to figure out the release schedule because they're, they're so different from the new stuff that Tavis and I have written right. recently. Okay. 
So I'm just trying to figure all of that out. Oh, it'll it'll work out for sure. Uh, yeah. You absolutely have various styles going on. And I, I'm going to get to the, the one we're going to play later and talk about that just a bit more. It seems there's a harder one coming at the end of yeah. end of this i love it um so christy you've got working on a dream and mosaic and then freestanding singles well i think that's why not why couldn't yeah. why isn't that the way to go these days it makes i got sense. you on, on apple music <laughs> oh cool thank you sure. <laughs> well let's switch gears a little christy i see that you are on oxygen right now and we could hear the yes. little kind of air being released and, and stuff like that but uh, 2009, you were diagnosed with, uh, is it called pulmonary sac- sarcoidosis? Yes. Pulmonary sarcoidosis. Can you give us a little bit about the diagnosis and what it, how it impacts your life? It is something that it, it forms granulomas in the lungs. And so it, it helps, it prevents me from getting full air capacity in my lungs oh, and right now my lungs look like they're filled with spider webs oh jeez! so it makes breathing difficult and, and there are people who who will get it and get over it oh yeah i am not one of those people oh, i hate to hear that Jeez. i did put it into remission a couple of times i was trying you know you know, knowing me, I was trying all the natural methods right. and I did well with it for a while. Right. But the last, I guess, five years or so, it's gotten progressively worse. Oh, geez. Uh, um, but it hasn't prevented me from doing anything. Well, that's good, at least, you know. Uh, yeah. To say nothing of the singing and the breathing necessary to sing and the playing and recording. But it's impacting your day-to-day life as well if you're on oxygen most most of the time? 24-7. 24-7. Yep. How do you manage to cope with this on a daily basis? So you're on oxygen most of the time. Obviously, you bring that with you wherever you go. Am I mistaken? Yeah, I've got a, a portable concentrator that I take with me. I travel with. If I'm say, staying somewhere overnight, you know, I keep it plugged in in the hotel. And yeah. Oh. Take it with me to concerts. Gotta, right. Gotta I saw it. you post about going to a concert uh, yeah. a little while back. Um, yeah. I went in May to see Alter Bridge and Seven Dust. Uh, what? House of Blues? Yes. Yep. And I was, I felt, I was kind of embarrassed and mortified being there with a the wheelchair and my oxygen machine, but. Oh. Uh. Those guys didn't care. And the Seven Dust guys are, are friends, and they knew all of this stuff was going on anyway. Well, that yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, very cool. I'm, I'm glad that you got out and how, did it. How was the show? Phenomenal. Yeah, that's, so, so I've heard good reviews from other friends. And then I drove to Richmond earlier this month to see them again. Oh, I nice. didn't stay for the concert because it was over 100 degrees. Ugh. And my oxygen machine kept overheating and turning off a couple oh, times. No, no, no. no so no, no, I, no. I went no. back to the hotel. <laughs> no, I don't blame you. At I least you were there to show your support. That was cool. Yeah. And I got all my hugs. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's hugs. more important than anything, hugs. for sure. Yeah. Um, so you're managing to, I, I don't think, I don't know if coping is the right word, but it is. I mean, it just, not in relation to just your work in music, but in daily life. Um, what do you, are you doing anything else to daily or weekly to manage this or keep it at bay? I am now doing pulmonary rehab at Conway Medical Center at their, their gym. Yeah. Oh, man. I've been going twice a week and actually starting Monday. That's tomorrow, isn't it? Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm going to start three times a week. Well, I sure hope it, it's helpful to you, no doubt. Yes, of course. It, it has helped me a lot. I'm getting a lot, lot stronger. Well, that sounds like you're on the right track. Yeah. Oh my God! Some I I, I don't even, I don't have words, but that's um, I'm sure it's daunting. You're going three times a week, but um, you are preparing for a double lung transplant. Yes. What the hell is that like to have to go through? Are Good you Lord wait listed? <laughs> uh, how does the process work? 
And is anything else you'd like to add about that? That's I don't even know what to say about this. I'm still jumping through hoops. I have to get more testing done. And the pulmonary rehab is one of the things that I have to to do right. in order to get on the list. Gotcha. Yeah. I also have to have a full-time caretaker. Oh. Mm-hmm. Wow. With me, you know, kind of before and after the surgery. Mm-hmm. So that's something I have to work on and more testing. And then once I get on the list, I wait. Yeah. You wait. Well, I hope you get get it get it going as soon as possible. Yeah, me too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Good luck with uh, all that. I'm sure yeah, we're not the only ones who are at a loss for words because that is that's um heavy in yeah. a Look I certainly, I certainly look, commend you for for doing all you do. Look, looking at you though, like this, this aura of positivity. Yeah, coming you, you, from you look, you look great. Yeah, you look thank great. you. That's uh, that's my ring light. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> nice. Awesome, Chris. Where do we get a half dozen of those? Wait, we need to, we need to go back to makeup. We'll be right back. <laughs> yeah. Christy, you're amazing. And it's great to know you. We we go back a while, and I I'm glad. I love you, and I'm I'm glad to finally be talking to you like this. I uh, know. Me too. Yo, what a real pleasure to, to see you yeah. again. Christy, what, what's next on the musical horizon for you? Oh, I've got more songs coming out, making the schedule, more writing, more lessons, and you know, that's that's all I do that's now. That's it. That's perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Well, continued success. Yes, continued we're in success. your we're in your corner. Thank you. And uh we're gonna we're gonna wind this out with the uh, Yes, let me th- th- this is a decidedly harder tune. Yes. This gives me a totally different vibe. It's called Shadows Fall. Um my son heard a bit of, about this. Uh he he got this decidedly. He I think he said it's got a Lincoln Park vibe to it. Does that make sense? Oh, thank you. Yeah. And I thought it reminded me of kind of Evanescence. Me too. Me too. And I I mean it's, but better. We don't we don't tell I mean it's it's something that probably songwriters don't want to hear. Like, right. uh, you know what I mean? But I mean, that that's awesome. No, it's a powerful song. I love it. But this, yeah, thank th- you. This is decidedly harder than the first two. That's yes. what I mean about you got some sort of divergent styles going on, which I find Yeah, I think cool. I was trying to find my sound. Yeah. Getting out everything that I've listened to, all my influences, right. and then finding myself. Understood. Yeah. I get you. As an artist, yeah. I can completely relate to that. Amen. Yeah. I, I love it. Christy, it's an honor to have had you today, and we appreciate it. Um, yep. If that's okay, we're going to close out with Shadows Fall. Yeah, we're going to put your links Thanks in. Thanks so much. Thank, Thank you, you very Christy. much. Right. Take care, Christy, and we're here. Here's this beautiful song, Shadows Fall. Yeah. Thanks for being with us on episode 79. 79. And uh, Yale Brothers at gmail.com. And there's one more thing rock and roll.